Hello there beautiful, good morning and welcome back to my channel. My name is Josepha and welcome to another Should You Pull video for Dissidia Final Fantasy Opera Omnia. Now today's video should hopefully be the last time that I'm doing this live on stream and possibly being a little messier than usual, but I wanted to go through these banners as they were released when we didn't know what was on them and there were a lot of variables on these banners such as with this one, VVC90 coming around that I would have wanted to have waited until the banner came live for me to have reported on anything and as I've said before I'm not a fan of perpetuating leaks so I don't really want to talk about them before they, anything like that happened. But on this banner we have Ico and VVLDs along with their C90s and it's going to be probably the last chance to get Garnet as far as I know so if you'd like to find out more about these guys then stay tuned and keep on watching. And if you want to see all of the stuff happening live like it is right now then do feel free to check out all my social media links down below as well as Twitch, Twitter, Discord, all of that good stuff and you can come and find me on there along with all these lovely people that are in my chat right now. <laughs> so thank you very much if you decide to do that. Over on Patreon, I do shout out one of my patrons every time I release a brand new video, and today that person is going to be Press Play, who is one of my Ultima patrons, so it's delightful to be able to do more hand-painted cards and things like that. I've honestly been exploring my artwork and stuff for things that I can bring to you guys in a more kind of tangible manner for a while, so the fact that people have responded so well to this is so wonderful, so a massive thank you goes out to you and all of my patrons as well. And Press Play actually has Garnet, on their card, which is really cool and apt to get, like, given what we have going on here. And then of course don't forget to check out all of the other content creators and all, all the resources related to City of Final Fantasy Opera Omnia. Special shout outs going out to Tombry Troop for their fantastic infographics, Mediu and Leo Bob for their translations over on Reddit, Decidia Info, Decidia Compendium, Decidia DB, all those great things that we all use with relation to the game and I hope you guys enjoy them as much as I do. Okay, so we're going to discuss the banner to begin with. As you can see here, we have, uh, well, as you can see from before, we have VV and Ico. But then let's take a look at each of these characters individually. So, to be honest with you, it's kind of an easy shout when it comes to VV in particular, because pretty much all VV's really gotten from his C90 is more HP dumps, which is really all he needed, realistically, like, to keep up with everybody. He's a damage dealer that has defense ignoring properties on his LD and the follow-up that comes from it. He still drains your HP a lot, so he can be quite dangerous, particularly if you're using characters that like their HP being above a certain point. So I'm looking at anyone that uses Last Stand, for example. You have to, be, have to be careful when it comes to VV. But Double Fire now has four HP dumps on it, and then Fire Plus has multiple HP dumps on it. Focus now has HP, like has uh, double HP dumps on it. Fire Enchant now increases his Brave Cap by 40%, which is pretty huge. And then Meteor, obviously with C85, now has four HP dumps on it. So he's very much the same as he always was. Like he's very locked into dealing fire and dark damage, but dealing rather a lot of it, and like I said, he has the Imperil and Self-Enchant, he's got a lot of attack power behind him, and he gets a lot of follow-ups, bearing in mind that you get a double HP follow-up attack on all of his dumps. So for example, when using Double Fire or his Meteor, you're getting six HP dumps, which is quite a lot. So if you want an H if you want just a large damage dealer with just an LD, then you can do very well with VV. Just be very cautious of the fact that he drains your HP as much as he does. But the same thing applies with that as it did back when he first came out with his LD. And you can turn that to your advantage. There are certain passives from, say, summons and things like that, like Odin or anything like that, where you can uh, take advantage of the HP loss as long as you're able to recover it. It's very important that you take him with a healer or something like that so that you're able to capitalize on that. Now, Ico gets a rework here as well. Now, Ico is obviously the star of the show getting a brand new LD, and Ico's actually a fairly contentious character within Dissidia Opera Omnia from this point because of what she what she is there to do and whether it's necessary for her to do it. So she does get a rework. So HP regen is now an instant turn cast. You know, it doesn't increase turn count, all that good stuff. You get all your HP buff regens, etc. Attack up, max bravery up. So it's all buffs, which is a thing to bear in mind because that means that those can be pushed off and you have to be careful with that. And then she gets an HP attack out of it and the healing from it is also very useful. Smite, the original battery attack from back in the day, is now a double HP dump with splash damage, which is fine, like, it's good, you'll, you know, 
bravery batteries are nothing special these days, but the fact that it does some extra damage is quite nice. Uh, her ability recovery attack all is party-wide brave cap da bravery damage cap up, which is also quite pleasant, um, and it restores some of the use of her skills. Terra homing at C19 now does four HP dumps and imperils the enemy for like for holy as well. And it also gives her access to double white. So very similarly to double fire, double holy now does four HP dumps, splash damage, and it now restores her H her EX gauge a little bit where it didn't before. So you're able to use Maidin or Terra homing a little more often. So in terms of damage. Iko's okay, but she is there as a support character. She's not, like, you'll find that as more characters become C90s, they're just gonna do a lot more damage than, than Iko. If you want damage from a support unit, look no further than Garnet. However, the LD from Iko is very interesting. So, Rebirth Flame itself recovers HP, revives anyone that's KO'd, does a uh, triple Brave HP attack with 100% AoE damage, and it also grants Phoenix Pinion. So Phoenix Pinion is a special effect, you get three stacks of this, where it's party brave damage up, party HP damage up, party holy enchant, which may or may not be a good thing, like it's a good thing 90% of the time, but if your enemy absorbs holy, which we have seen many times in the past, then this might not be a great idea. And then while any H like party member goes below 50% max HP, and this includes them dying, there you get a attack rebirth flame trigger, like a rebirth flame attack of triggers. So what this does is basically the same thing as the LD attack does, which means that you have auto raise on your characters. And the reason that people like this as much as they do is because this gets past Lufenia orbs. Like if you're just worried about clearing the mission and you're not worried about anything else, then having Rebirth Flame means that you can get past a lot of Lufenia Rolls that you may not have been able to originally. Now the thing with this is, Iko is a pretty cool character, and the main reason that I enjoy Iko as much as I do is because she actually has buff extension, similar to like Yuna or Saz or Hope, where if she triggers a buff, she extends any like existing buffs by a turn. So for someone who loves Alize or anyone that really likes their buffs being extended, Iko is actually pretty great. But the Rebirth Flame is what most people are here for, and my suggestion with this is if you don't feel super confident with Lufenia or Lufenia Plus or anything like that, then Iko will carry you for a while. Like that ability will carry you if it's something that you're worried about. However, if you're a veteran player like myself who doesn't like who clears everything as it comes out, you might find you don't really need Iko. And I think that Phoenix Pinion is nice to have and it might open up some fun strategies where you just blitz through stuff and don't really care. But by and large, I do think that because the content going forward is as easy as it is, it's not something that veteran players are actively going to need to look for. But I think that if you're a newer player or less confident, as I said, then this is a character you probably want to be looking at. Hello there everybody, we're back now and uh, we've just cleared out like the, the basic Equinox missions and I had a quick look at what to expect from it. Um, and it's, you know, it's quite nice. And having seen Iko's costume, I'm gonna throw a little something at Iko. Like I said to myself, I wasn't going to because I already have Vivi. I've spent a lot on on Garnet and Alize, and I've got thought, mm, you gotta you gotta calm down somewhere. But I thought, you know what? It's not gonna hurt to throw a few tickets at it. Yeah, I've spent loads of tickets, but at this point, I'm actually kind of amused by the idea that if I spend a hundred tickets here and don't get anything, that's two thousand tickets without an LD I wanted. But hey, we can hope that that doesn't happen, and we actually break the trend here, and that would be pretty cool. So. Why not? We thought we'd go in for it, and there's actually some uh, LDs here that I don't have, which is quite interesting. I don't have Leon, I don't have, um, oh, it's just Van and, it's just Lude and Leon I don't have on that one. So there's actually quite a lot of LDs that I am actually missing, but not on that banner, so that's kind of cool. But, let's see what we could do with Ico first. So, we only want, we only want the Moogle Racket, we don't want anything else. But if we got it, it would be really cool. I don't feel like I need it, but I like it because Ico's like FF9 and I enjoy FF9. So, here's hoping. Okay, blue orb to start. That's fine. I'm not gonna go any more than like 100 tickets though. Like, I, cause I just, I don't want to keep sinking. 
Um, like, this is meant to be the period in time in which I'm saving, so I'm trying to be really good now, because I haven't been for the last couple of banners, but I wasn't going to be when it was Garnet and Alize, right? Uh, sorry, not Garnet, Alexander. Ooh, look, a 1 out of 10, 1 out of 10, um, 15 CP. Love that for me. Let's see what we can do here. Um, so I managed to get back up to 667 tickets, so that's something. It's not in the thousands like some people I've seen, but it's, it's good enough. That same Zidane weapon. Oh! Can we break the trend? Can we break the, the, the limits? No, nope, VV, VVEX. <laughs> never mind. Okay, keep going. Oh, another one. See, I, I, I never get, I, I get, gold orbs are weird. Like, I, I tried not to get excited over gold orbs because they tend to not be nice to me. But every time I see one, I'm still a little bit, ooh, just maybe, just maybe. We broke it! We broke the trend! We didn't go to 2,000 tickets! <laughs> we didn't go to 12 to 2,000 tickets. So that's... Uh, 1,880 tickets. So I'm, I'm happy. I'm actually over the moon that a ticket actually gave me something. I'm really, really happy with that. So that, that makes up for Alize. That absolutely makes up for Alize. So... Thank you very much for watching this bit. This is the last of the Should You Pull videos that will have pulls in it. We'll go back to having pulls and uh, content being in the same videos. Um, obviously, I will be doing some more footage after this part of the stream and all of that so that we can go back off camera, uh, off stream and talk about like, would you pull, should you pull, all of that kind of thing. But I'm really happy as an FF9 fan. I really enjoy Ico, so I think that that's really cool. So thank you very much for joining me and I will see you guys in a bit. Okay, so now that pulls, should you pull, but the video bit's all done while I'm doing on stream, I'm now back off stream again so that I can bring you guys the would you pull section and the eventual should you pull section of this video. But before I go into would you pull, I did want to just quickly make a note on the event itself. It's basically kind of a, a who's who of hellish Lufenias that we've had in the past. But there's one thing that we've got this time that we didn't have the last time, and it's access to Garnet friend units. So the fact that it's a heretic based mission means you can only use each character once, so even if you have your own Garnet, you can only realist realistically use it once, at which point you'd probably want to save it for the Lufenia Plus mission that's in there. But if you take a Garnet friend and things that all fulfill the orb, you're probably fine just doing that. I personally think that the Crevasse and Abyss missions were a lot more fun than this one, purely because friend units made it very, very easy. But it's great for people who want to kind of clear it that way. Now, let's go into Would You Pull. Now, as with the last two, like, bit of banners and things like that, I couldn't do a poll because we didn't know exactly what was on the banner. But while I was doing my stream, etc., I did ask for some comments from my patrons with regards to the banner and whether they feel that you should pull as well. So... I'll go straight into those big thank yous to those of you who posted comments as well. So Sir Alex says, Ico comes with a unique party revive and healing mechanic that allows to bypass even Lufenia orbs, those few lethal ones that we may get these days anyway. Plus party holy enchant, good healing, and a decent damage for support. I feel like a kit is so unique that it's great to have in your pocket. The current content doesn't really need immortality buttons, but it's something that may save you in a fight struggle you're struggling with in the future. I don't plan on using her much for the revival mechanic, but I will rely on her for Yuri's intertwined wills orb, which is holy damage and maybe in Transcendent 7 to support Firion and Machina instead of Lude. Which, yeah, she does have lots of little bits and pieces. She's very much a coverall unit. And I think that, I've said this earlier as well, but I actually think one of the things I like most about Ico is that buff extension. Like, she's the first character in C90 era that has access to that. And as someone who loves Alize, definitely a character that I shall look into for that. 
Sergeant Tuffy says, I don't use the term game breaking lightly, but Ico is the textbook definition, by the textbook definition, is game breaking, in that she straight up bypasses normal rules that the game plays by. Her ability to fully res the party even after Lufenia orbs is too powerful to be outright ignored, even if people with developed rosters aren't likely to use her often. New players should absolutely look at picking Ico up though, she just enables too much. The ability to outright or ignore a fire that's hard and rage mechanic is simply unparalleled flexibility, allowing people to brute force through fights that they wouldn't be able to otherwise. I couldn't agree with this more. Like, while I'm somebody that probably won't use her a huge amount, like, I'm glad that I have her so that I have her in my pocket if I want to open up quirky, like, fights where I brute force a Lufenia Orb and don't really care, and she happens to be from my, one of my favourite Final Fantasy games, that's great. But for a new player, she's absolutely fantastic. Like, if you're not confident in doing Lufenia Pluses or anything like that, then Ico is most certainly not one that you want to be passing up on. And then finally, Cobalt Zork says, I've just pitied Ico. Not that I need her, but I just really like her, and I really wanted Garnet's BT. She does a lot with healing, party enchant, imperil, battery, but is in no way essential to any veteran player. That said, I think she'd be a good pocket pick for any newer players as her LD mechanic could save you having to pull on banners you aren't interested in just to satisfy an orb. Just revive through it and then burst them down. It won't always work, but it could give you the edge and save you throwing precious resources just to counter an orb but still get you the rewards. Which, absolutely fine, like, perfectly well said. I do think, um, first of all, I'm very sorry you had to pity her, that's never a nice thing for anybody to have to deal with. But at the same time, I do think that she's a character that you can use in a large plethora of things, unless of course the enemy absorbs wholly, at which point you're probably not going to want to use Ico very much. But she does have a lot going for her. I didn't get any comments on Vivi, but I think realistically Vivi doesn't really warrant comments because he's very much the same as he's always been, and he does damage, and a fair amount of it. And then we're going to get Strago come up soon, who does just as much without burning out too quickly and stuff like that. So Vivi's probably not as exciting as we'd like him to be, but he does belong here to kind of finish off the anniversary batch with all the FF9 stuff that works too. So now let's finally go into the question of whether you should be pulling for Ico and Vivi. Now in the case of Vivi, I think that his damage rises a lot with his C90 and it's definitely a lot better than a lot of characters that we've seen of late. But he is very, very linear in what he does, and because you only get three uses of Doomsday, I would have loved to have seen another use of Doomsday. It would have absolutely done wonders for him. You might find that he runs out of steam actually a lot quicker than a lot of damage dealers do, because realistically you need that LD follow-up for him to really be doing stuff. Now you can turn this to your advantage with his HP drains and such, triggering Odin, certain HP thresholds on certain abilities, stuff like that. But it's also a bit of a double-edged sword because if you like characters that use last stand and Vivi pushes you under 50%, then you're not going to be in last stand reach anymore. And there are other characters that like their health to stay high. And it means that you also have to be careful of what enemy turns are going to be more than you would have been normally. Because he drains his health and also the health of your party, you kind of have to have a healer alongside him in order to make him worthwhile. Now luckily we have Garnet, whose healing is ridiculous alongside everything else that's ridiculous about her, but it is something to bear in mind. And we're getting Strago level 90 very, very shortly, who actually probably does more damage than Vivi does in some aspects, and also has rebreak and stuff in his kit. It's actually pretty scary how much damage Strago can turn out. With Ico though, Ico, it's very much a, it depends on you. If you're just looking like, if, the, if everyone was a blank slate of a character and no one knew who any of these characters were, we're looking at the kits alone, Ico's kit depends entirely on its desirability depending on how comfortable you are with the game. If you're not very confident in clearing Lufenia plus missions or Lufenia missions or just dealing with Lufenia orbs at all, and you want that safety blanket, she does that, and she does allow you to brute force things that you never would have been able to do before, and therefore you can kind of ignore a lot of, uh, of Lufenia orbs. But, going forward, you will find that a lot of the stuff that we're going to be dealing with in terms of content doesn't really warrant having that kind of necessity, because you could probably just brute force most things anyway, whether you're using Phoenix Pinions or not. So, if you're not confident, she's a gift from the gods. She's absolutely incredible. If you're already very comfortable with the game, then you probably don't need her. However, as someone who would classify himself as someone that probably didn't need her, I went for her at least a little bit anyway, because I enjoy having solid damage, even if it's not Garnet level damage, as well as a decent HP regen. 
like she's very buff heavy, which can be a bad thing because it means they're easy to fall off, but it can also be a good thing because there are some things that ask for lots of buffs. I'm looking at you, Ramza. Um, you know, there's there are like ebbs and flows with Ico, and she does still have that buff extension, which is something that I personally value very highly because it allows me to experiment with characters that have shorter buff spans in new and unique ways. So whether you go for Garnet or not, or for Ico rather, doesn't really have any bearing. If you're missing Garnet BT though, then you should absolutely go in for pretty much any reason for you to try and get it. So that's, as far as we know, for the time being at least, everything to do with the anniversary for Final Fantasy Dissidia Opera Omnia. So that is, it's been a roller coaster. Like, honestly, all of this FF9 and 14 stuff and shenanigans has made me very happy. Yeah, it got expensive at the beginning, but Ico literally rounded it out pretty perfectly as far as I'm concerned, certainly in terms of pulls and everything, and that kick-ass costume, I'm, I, we snapped that up very quickly. Um, so let me know what you think of the anniversary that we've had up until now. What I'm going to do, because the game seems to be absolutely determined to throw a spanner in the works in terms of my scheduling and its own scheduling lining up, because we have Locke coming on on Monday, and then we have Edgar on Thursday, and then we'll have Papa Limo and the community stream the following week, my aim is to release my Should You Pull video for Locke on Friday, and then I'll also release Papalimo and Edgar's for the following Tuesday so that we have all of the information available to us before we go into the community stream because the anniversary is not over yet and the fact that the community stream is a week earlier than the end of the month does make me wonder if perhaps, perhaps there's a little extra surprise because this is exactly the same behavior we saw last year when it came to Vincent. So I'm now curious as to whether there's a little extra spice or whether we'll just move into Gilgamesh. Either way, I'm happy. Let me know what you guys think down below. Don't forget to like the video, to subscribe to the channel, and click that bell for notifications of any future videos I might be making. And that's going to be it from me. So happy birthday to Dissidia Opera Omnia. Thank you very much for the four years of fun that we've had so far. And here's to look forward to a bunch more. See you guys later. Thanks very much. Take care.